Okay, uh, so I got sent a question, a second follow-up question from someone who sent me a previous question. So the question, I, I might start, because it's quite a long one, I might sort of s s read some of it and answer bits. Uh, I understand your response, and I believe the fact that I remain with questions is my ego at work, as spirit has no questions. That's true. Mm. The spirit, or if you're in the observer, or the non-dual field, or the oneness, doesn't have questions. That's very mm. good. Uh, I agree with that. Mm. So the remaining question is, why did separation ever come about, even as an idea? Mm. In ACIM, it said that God did not create the world because God is mm. per perfect and loving. And can well, I'm going to stop there. I know you've, you've written a bit more. I'll read that a bit later because I want to answer it from this thing. Like, why did separation ever come about, mm. even as an idea? Um, mm. And I'd like to, when you ask the question, why did separation, it's kind of an intellectual thing. It's a bit like, you know, give me an answer. You know, there's me in separation asking for an answer about why something is not right. Mm. Why did separation ever occur, uh, even as an idea? It's almost like there's a, there's a person who, and there's like a God, it almost sounds like there's a God out there who um, had the idea of separation. And why did he have that idea of separation? You know, why did this even happen? So... Yeah. I'd like to, uh, one, one of the things uh, which I really think is um, helpful is that questions get answered, one of the best ways to answer questions, especially when they're asked from the level of the ego, is to go to a level beyond ego, and then the question automatically gets answered, you see, because if, if I answer the question, like if someone asks me a why question, and I give them an answer, it won't fully satisfy. I mean, it might fully satisfy intellectual curiosity. So, um, so why has separation ever come about? Um, well, and, and, the, and I'll read a bit more like it. Um, okay, let me just answer it from this bit and I'll, I'll read a bit more of the question. So first of all, if you go, if you practice things like the observer or going into non-dual fields, so if it, there's, so a question arises in consciousness, like, why did separation happen? You know, why did this world occur, or something like that, or who created this world, or why did the world happen the way it happened? Um, then, uh, if you go to the observer of that question, uh, uh, and then be that which is observing the question, and then if you go to the observer of the observer of that question, then you go into what I call is a, a non-dual field, or a field of, thank you, a field of observing. So then you'll realize that okay. in the observer, okay. the question doesn't exist. So in the truth, um, no separation has occurred. Separation doesn't exist. In the non-dual field, the separation has never occurred. In the non-dual field, in the observer, there's no time, there's no separation, none of those exist. So how does separation occur? Separation occurs through, you can see it, as soon as you identify with thoughts, with time, with location, with the body, then immediately the experience of separation immediately occurs. So how does this separation occur? Through identification, through identification with thought, like time, body, uh, ideas. So it's really one is the sky, and in the sky, there is no separation, or there is only oneness, but as soon as you identify like as a cloud, then separation occurs. So in that experiential answer, if you do that yourself, go to the observer of the question, and until that, then that will then explain how, how separation came about. Now I know you're going to go into, I'll read this from an, A Course in Miracles. But, so in A Course in Miracles, it said that God did not create the world. Yes, it does say in The Course in Miracles, God did not create the world, and so it is not real. And for me, what ha I, I, what I, I only really go on the lessons, I don't really, I'm not an expert on the text, but you know, for me, God did not create the world. I mean, God the absolute in the non-dual uh, non sense, prior to the manifest world, in the infinite sense, uh, that, is, that is truth. So in the infinite, um, God has... Um, so when you say God did not create it, you're letting go of the identified, the dualistic uh, 
experiencing, and so you're going into the not, the non-dual experiencing, and so uh, and so then it's seen that that there is no um, uh, then it's seen there is no experience of um, a bit disrupted. So in there it says God. So there is no experience of a dualistic or a meaningful world. So God is perfect and loving and can only create like Himself. Ultimately, it talks in the Course in Miracles about uh, God is formless, timeless, eternal. So that's the absolute God. And so that none of this um, separation occurs. So this world where uh, time exists and separation exists is not, not God as the absolute. So hopefully that so when we say god did not create cancer it's not real or god did not create separation so it's not real we're returning to god in the absolute state in the oneness or in the observer state so we release because when you're in the identified like i am my body like god created my body and it says in the course in miracles it says i'm not my body i'm not my body uh what does it say i'm not a body i'm free for i'm god created me yeah, so, so it's, we're returning to the God state by refusing the identification with the separated dualistic state. So we return to the, to the truth. So that's why that's used in the Course of Miracles. Um, but in essence, the Son of God is also perfect as his Father created him. I can't get my head around where the separation and imperfection originated, originated out of this per, uh, perfection. I think I've tried to explain it from my point of view through the identification and then the experiencing of sense as a separated form when one is, ident one is identified with form like time and body and space. Okay, yeah, I think uh, advanced. I think a lot of this, I think the Course in Miracles can be, um, can cause confusion and I realize that the Course in Miracles is sometimes talking to you from a more dualistic perspective. Mm. Like in the, uh, mm. it will say like, God is the love in which I forgive uh, God is a love in which I forgive uh, Donald Trump, for example. So it's almost like um, taking that almost presupposes that I'm I'm a real person and Donald Trump is a real person, and there's a me that needs to forgive Donald Trump as if that's all real. And then later on, actually uh, later on, it explains in forgiveness that you act, eventually you realize there was nothing ever to forgive. So when you realize the non-dual, um, the oneness states where you're not identified, then you realize this was just a joke, that there was such a thing. So when it says the word son, or I need to forgive you because you've another son, or I need to see Christ in you because you're, I see badness in you. So they're talking from different levels. Um, so sometimes it's, you might think, well, there's a bad son, and there's a pure son, and uh, there's a God son. You, may, you might even think there's a God son that's partly in the body and partly not in the body. So I think you can, but once you sort of, um, realize that the absolute is, is beyond separation. A lot of it is to clear the idea of separation. So one can re return to a state of infinite oneness and love beyond all separation and all uh, identification. So thanks for that uh, lovely question. <laughs>